Welcome aspiring data scientists and welcome future Python programmers. Today, we will have a look at data types. As you maybe remember from last class, we already had a look at the variables, but in variables, you can always store some kind of content or data. And the kind of content or type of content it is actually is in Python defined under the name data type. So as you see in the previous class, we did variables. We did how we can assign variables. Um, and finally, how we can name variables and how we can put some kind of consistency into naming them. The key topics of today are strings, numerical values, integers, and floats. So these are names for the data type of a variable. Data types. First of all, a definition. Python supports different data types. Each variable should belong to one of the data types supported in Python. The data type determines the value that can be assigned to a variable in the type of operation that may be applied to the variable. So to keep it short and simple, we have two main types in Python. One time it's a numerical value and the other time it's a string. So on average, more some kind of text. The first example is here. We have first defined the variable quantity apple box, and then we store it in that the element 13. So we could say, okay, the amount of apples in this box is 13. So 13 is a numerical value. But we don't know yet what kind of box it is actually. So we said, okay, box one, we will give it the sticker apple box. So here we define variable one and we assign the name to it, apple box, through using those little quotes on both sides. First, the numerical values. And in Python, there are three numerical values that are supported. The first one is integers. Integers are numbers without a decimal point. So it doesn't matter what kind of number there is, as long as it does not have a decimal point, it is always an integer. Our example here is one, five, but it also can be 13,450, for example. The big difference between floats and integers is always the decimal point. So if you have a number with a decimal point, it's always a float. It is, for example, 13.3, 1.412, or even much larger numbers. As long as they have a decimal point, it is a float. Complex numbers, we don't lose a lot of time on these. If you write more complex codes, it's sometimes more interesting to make imaginative numbers. So basically you combine a real part and an imaginative part together to make your calculations. They can normally look like five plus 13, but for now that is not that important for us. Strings on the other side is seen more as the text version of a data type. So you have numerical values, numbers, and then you have normally some kind of text or in Python it is called string. To the def definition first, Python strings are a series of character enclosed within quotes. Use always any type of quotes to enclose Python strings that is either single, double or triple quotes. To access string elements, we use the slice operator. String characters begin at index zero, meaning that the first character is at index zero. So if we make an example, we can here have the variable string and the content which we put into that storage unit is Python is easy. So Python easy itself is a string. Now, if you print out the result, straightforward, we get Python is easy. That is a string. Now you can even slice strings. What this means slicing in Python, that basically means that you don't use the whole string, you just try to get subparts of the string. So for example, only the first letter, only the last letters, maybe the middle part, the first part, there are many different ways 
And on the next slide, we will learn how to use slicing in Python. So if you want to slice a string in Python, then there are certain rules that you always have to keep in mind. If first of all, if you want to slice a variable, you do it by calling the variable and afterwards you have to define the index number. In our case, the first index number is P because the string starts with a P. Now to the rules. The first index letter is always a zero. Slicing always includes the first index letter, letter called and never the last one. So in our example, we have a zero until four. That basically means the first letter is included. It is P with the index number zero. And the last letter that is included is the fourth letter, but the third index. Number three, leaving one side empty takes all letters until the beginning or the end of the string. As we can see here in example three, everything is written from O onwards. Number four, a space between two words is always an index letter, meaning that if you have a space as we have it here and you call the index of that specific space, you will get nothing as an output because you cannot really see a space. Finally, if you want to multiply strings, that is also very easy because you can just use the star or the multiplication operator and just put the string multiplied by two into a print statement to print out two times your desired string. Finally, if you forgot the type of um, the data type of your variable, you don't have to run through the whole code and search for it. You can just use the type function on a variable. In our example here, we can just use x equals five or y equals 7.7 .7, and z equals Python is so easy. And if we use the type function on each individual variable, the output will be that Python provides us with the class name of that specific variable. In our case, it's integers, floats, and strings. In the end, we have a couple of more examples. One until four is quite obvious, so we don't really have a look at that in our online video. But the little difference here is maybe this huge numbers number, because it has a decimal point in between, we can say it's a float. But if we now look at example six, we still have a decimal point in there, but the big point is we have both quotes on both sides of the number. And that changes it from a number to a string. Even though it has the same content, Python will see this one always as a, as an integer, uh, as a string, and this one always as a float. And finally, if you apply the type function on, for example, the print function, Python will show you that it is neither a float, nor a string, nor an integer. It is the built-in function or method, but more to that later on. The learning goals achieved for this week is first of all, we learned how you can use Python as a calculator. Afterwards, we learned how we can define name and delete variables. And in the end, in this lesson, you got to know what floats are, what integers are, and what strings are. Congratulations, you have finished the first part of the introduction course for Python. Please don't forget to do the variables and data types assignment in Jupyter Notebook. And we are looking forward to see you in the next online lecture. Goodbye.